प्राप्यते फलम कर्म किं परम कर्म तजडम कृति महोदतौ पतन कारणम फलम शाश्वतम गति निरोधकम ईश्वरार्पितम निश्चयाकृतम चित्त शोधकम मुक्ति साधकम कायवान्मन कार्यमुत्तमम भोजनम जप चिंतन क्रम जगत ईषदी युक्त सेवन अष्टमूर्ति देव पूजन उत्तम सवादुच्चमंदत चिज जप ध्यान उत्तम आज्यधारया स्रोत सासम सरल चिंतन विरत परम भेद भावना सोहमितस भावना विदा पावनी मका भाव शून्य सुस्थि भावना बला भक्तिमा स्वस्थता क्रिया भक्ति योग बोध निश्चित वायुरोधना मना जाल पक्षिवाध साधन चित्तवायवश्चिक्रियायुता शाखयोधी शक्ति मूलका लय विनाशने उभय रोधने लयगत पुनर्भवती नो मृत प्राणवंदनाशमेतमसो कृष्टोगिनामस्ति कि स्वस्ति यदाश्यम चित्तमात्मन चिदर्शन तत्वर्शन मनसम तो कि मगणे नसम मगराजवा वृत्तस्वहम वृत्तिमाश्रिता वृत्तो मनो विद्यन चिंतकम निज विचारण अहमिनाशपाध्यमंतया स्फुरतिरस्वय परम पूर्ण सदाख्यमह अहमिलीन के प्रलय सत्या प्राणीतम नाहमेकड़ यस सत्वासिका चिवेतरा सत्यया ऋचे चिंतयाशीवेशीला सत्स्वस्तु केवल स्वात्मदर्शन ईश दर्शन स्वात्मत आत्मसंस्थि स्वात्मदर्शन आत्मनिर्दया ज्ञानवर्जिता ज्ञानहीनचे ज्ञानमस्ति कि किदर्शने अव्यया पूर्ण चित्सुख बंध मुक्त परम सुख विंदती नजीवस्तु दैविक अहमेतक निज विधानक 
Come to verse 22. So those if you like, you can repeat after me. Vigrahindriya pranaditama Vigrahindriya pranaditama Nahame kasat tadjadang yasat Nahame kasat tadjadang yasat So here he says, Ramana says, I am one and real. Uh, eka Sat. And body mind complex is uh, insentient and unreal. Now, what is this body mind complex? He gives the five layers of the human personality. Vikraha here means physical body. The Annama, the physical body. And then um, uh, here Indriya includes um, the senses. And then Prana, the Pranamaya Kosha, the vital sheet. Then uh, uh, Dhi, uh, the actually Vigyanamaya. So here Indriya and Prana, in that Pranamaya Kosha and Manomaya Kosha are included actually. And Dhi is Vigyanamaya Kosha. And then Tamaha here refers to the Ananda Kosha. I am none of these. Here, Ramana Maharshi has given the uh, exact procedure for self inquiry. So, the multiple procedures available in Vedanta. Here, he has uh, given one very well known procedure for self inquiry, which we will study and also try to practice a little bit uh, today. So this is the famous procedure from the Taittiriya Upanishad. This is called Pancha Kosha Vichara. So those, uh, 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 make sure that your phones are on silent. Mm -hmm. huh? Pancha Kosha Vichara. What is this Pancha Kosha Vichara? In the Taittiriya Upanishad, we find um, the Brahmananda Valli. The three chapters are there. In the second chapter, you find this... Uh, Beautiful, uh, the first, first stanza, the first paragraph, which contains the essence of Vedanta, I think. It goes like this. <coughs> Brahma vidapno te param tadesha bhyukta 
सत्यम ज्ञानमनंत ब्रह्म यो वेद निहित गुहायां परमेभ्यो मन सो वश्नुते सर्वान कामान सह ब्रह्मणा विपश्चिते थी वट डज दैट मीन द फर्स्ट लाइन गिव्स अस द होल एसेंस ऑफ वेदांत द फर्स्ट लाइन सेज द नोअर ऑफ ब्रह्मन अटेन्स द हाइएस्ट द नोअर ऑफ ब्रह्मन अटेन्स द हाइएस्ट थ्री थिंग्स हैव बीन सेड हियर आई जस्ट समराइज ब्रीफली वट इज इट्स वॉट इट सेज एंड देन वी विल लॉन्च इन टू दिस इन्वेस्टिगेशन The knower of Brahman attains the highest. Three things have been said here. There is something called Brahman. Some ultimate reality is mentioned here. Brahman, something called Brahman. Uh, second, knowledge of Brahman is mentioned that you have to know Brahman. And third, a goal has been mentioned. Attains the highest. Now we can have three questions about these. These three. What is this Brahman? What is this ultimate reality? Vedanta talks about. Second. What is the knowledge of Brahman? How do I know Brahman? If I'm supposed to know Brahman, how do I know Brahman? Third, um, attains the highest. What is the highest? What do we attain by this? And the answers are given in the succeeding lines. What is Brahman? Tadesha bhukta. It has been said in the Vedas. What is Brahman? Satyam jnana manantam Brahma. The, maybe the most beautiful, profound, and deep. definition of the ultimate reality that I've ever come across so the ultimate reality brahman is limitless consciousness existence satyam reality truth existence gyanam knowledge consciousness <coughs> anantam without limit uh, brahma brahman is limitless existence consciousness satyam gyanam anantam brahma that's that's how it is defined and if you want the details of this definition i will not go into it now that's not the subject today details you can find i have given a couple of talks about this called defining god you cannot actually define it but you can if you investigate this definition you will see why it's a great definition and why actually you cannot define the ultimate reality um so that's the answer to the first question what is brahman the second question is we are supposed to know brahman so how do we know brahman that's our subject today actually this this verse is how do we know brahman how do we know that we are brahman and the answer given in the upanishads in a cryptic first this 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 central line the middle line is yo vedan hitam guhayam parame vyoman you have to realize brahman in the sacred space of the cave of the heart sacred space of the cave of the heart this is just a poetic way of saying you have to know brahman as i am brahman not that is brahman now i know brahman uh, or god is brahman or this world is brahman something is brahman out there no i am brahman that's the way you have to know brahman uh, no one might say that that's not very helpful how do i know that i am brahman we'll come to it that's the that's what uh, bhagwan ramana maharshi is saying in this verse and we will see in detail now but the just to complete the thing the third question what is the highest what will we get out of all of this then the next line explains it um so ashnute sarvan kaman sah brahmana vipaschite iti realizing brahman as pure consciousness i am brahman what will happen what will you gain what is this highest you attain the fulfillment of all your desires simultaneously we are trying to fulfill all our desires little by little throughout our lives Uh, and it keeps on increasing nothing is satisfying but suppose everything is fulfilled all at once forever you attain complete lasting deep fulfillment forever as in the gita sri krishna says um attaining which no other gain seems higher yang labdha na cha param labham manyate tato adhikam having attained which you do not find anything else which can be greater than this which you have already attained just means tito dukhena guruna api na vichalyate being established in which the greatest of sorrows cannot shake you which means that even after you established in brahman you know you are enlightened sorrows will continue the world will continue old age disease death will come come to the body but you will be unshaken you are beyond it that that's the um, promise of spirituality so attainment all of of all our wishes all our desires simultaneously 
what are they talking about? Are they talking about Black Friday or <laughs> Amazon Prime Day that you can fulfill all your desires immediately? Uh, no, not like that. What we were looking for is deep fulfillment, lasting happiness, peace which cannot be shaken and disturbed, a peace that passes understanding. We are looking for that. Only for that we are trying to fulfill all these desires. Sensuous desires, money, pleasure, achievement, power, status, uh, desire to live longer, uh, all of these. All of these are just ways of attaining that one thing which we are all searching for, the deep lasting fulfillment. That you will get when you realize that you are Brahman. When you realize you are Brahman, Aham, Brahma, when that becomes a reality, not a philosophy, not a thought, not a teaching, not something to believe or uh, aspire towards, when it becomes an evident reality. Just like <coughs> I am here sitting in this chair, I am Sarva Priyananda, that is so evident to me, I don't even give it a second thought. It becomes so evident to you, uh, absolutely natural, uh, then you have attained this fulfillment. So this is all of Vedanta. But at this point we may say, I still need some more explanation. <laughs> what is this Satyam Jnana Manantam Brahma? So whole, that's a whole subject in itself. Detailed explanation has been given by Shankaracharya in his commentaries. But if you want uh, an explanation in a talk, you know, of all of this is about Brahman. So what is it, Brahman exactly? Uh, do look it up, defining God. I think I've given the talk two or three times. Okay. Um, what con and the third one, there is a whole section on that, which we will come to later on. That what is this highest fulfillment? What is this unending bliss you are talking about, Ananda? For that, in Taittiri Upanishad, later there is a whole section called Ananda Mimamsa. Um, Ramana Maharshi will touch upon it at the very end of this text. But right now is the second question. How do I realize I am Brahman? What is the knowledge of Brahman? You have to realize Brahman in the sacred space of the cave of the heart. That's a poetic way of saying you realize I am Brahman. I am Brahman. I, which I, I, who I thought I was Sarva Priyananda, actually I am Brahman. How do I do that? Please explain in detail. When the Upanishad says, all right, I'll give you a detailed explanation. It starts. Um, since Brahman, infinite consciousness, bliss, all of these seem very abstract to us, then Upanishad, like a good teacher, it starts with where the student is. You know, what, we, what we know is not infinite consciousness or infinite existence. We know the world, which is full of existing things and people and animals and plants. This is the existing world. And we know ourselves. I am here. I am this person in this world. So anything, any teaching you have to give me, you have to start here. With my present level of understanding. And the Upanishad does exactly that. It comes down from that infinite existence, consciousness, bliss to this world here. How it does um, the next lines. I will chant and translate. Tasmadva etasmad atmana akasha sambhuta akashad vayo vayor agni agnir apaha adhya prithivi prithivyam oshadhaya oshadhibhyo annam so yam purusha annara samaya. It says that from that Brahman. Which is Atman? Quickly the Upanishad introduces the core teaching of Vedanta there. We are talking about infinite existence, consciousness, bliss, ultimate reality. From that Brahman, which is this Atman? You. <laughs> from that emerged space, appeared space. From space appeared um, um, air. From air appeared fire. From fire appeared water. From water appeared earth. And by a mixture of all of this, the world was created, uh, plants were created, uh, the uh, human beings were created from the plants. How? From the annarasamaya, from the essence, the extract of the plants which was as absorbed by our parents. From that, this it comes down to this body, soyam purusha annarasamaya. This body, this human being is basically created from the, uh, ex from the food eaten by our parents. So he's talking about the physical body right now, what we, where we are. Now it starts there. Now what uh, Ramana Maharshi has said, um, he shows us 
the same, he has taken the same methodology of the Taittiriya Upanishad, the Pancha Kosha Vichara. The methodology is this. I am trying to show you, Upanishad is trying to show us, Raman Maharshi is trying to show us that we are Brahman. We don't see that. We see ourselves as this. Now we have to be taken from this to the realization of ourselves as Brahman. And this procedure will take us. Now, here the procedure will take us. Remember, the process is always the same. As we go on, the process is always the same. What did he say? Do I get it? Is it a fact? Shramana Manana Nididhyasana. What did he say? Do I get it? Is it a fact? I'm adapting, so making it simpler. At every point, you will notice that the uh, Upanishad, uh, Ramana Maharshi, the Panchakosha Vichara, does not talk about anything extraordinary, anything mystical. It's talking about just the fact of our experience, what we are all experiencing all the time. Um, first, when we are asked, what are you? Who are you? We immediately point to this. This one, here. So, are you the body? <clears throat> I think so. We can start there. Now, this body is called, in the Upanishads, Annamaya Atma. Uh, Upanishad calls it Atma. Later on in Advaita Vedanta, we have systematized it to Kosha, Pancha Kosha, five layer sheets. Upanishad never, never even goes there. It just says, you think of the body, the self, the self is the body, Annamaya Atma. The body is the self. Let's start there. Uh, what is this body? The Upanishad gives it a name, Annamaya. Annamaya here means modification of food, that which is produced from food. First it was produced from food eaten by our parents and then it is sustained by food eaten by us. Just now we had poa, that is anna. And then the body is a remarkable biological machine. It takes in food of all sorts, food and drink from the environment and then modifies it, transmutes it into flesh and blood and removes the uh, uh, unnecessary portion. So this is called Annamaya, a modification of food. So we'll say, all right, so. Now notice one thing, it continuously changes from childhood to, uh, from, from babyhood to childhood to um, teenage to youth to middle age, how much it has changed. Imagine this body and if you look at your baby pictures which your mom never um, tires of showing you and embarrassing you. <laughs> you were this. So that body and this body. So much difference. And yet I feel I am the same one. <laughs> I feel I am the same one. I the same one and the continuously changing body. I the unchanging and the continuously changing body. Cannot be the same thing. Why? Literally changing and unchanging cannot be the same thing. It's, it's contradictory. Suppose somebody is running around and you're sitting still. If you catch hold of that running person running around, either you will be dragged or you will make that person stop. If something is changing continuously and I feel I am unchanging, if I catch hold of that and say I am that, either I will start changing or that thing cannot change. It will stop. Body is continuously changing and yet I say I am the unchanging. Not only I say, I may be mistaken, but everybody says it is common sense. It is law. Legally, you are the same person. Huh? from baby to youth to childhood to you know, to youth to middle age same person legally so changing unchanging cannot be the same thing so I cannot be the body the Annamaya I often quoted this uh, Hollywood actress uh, who was interviewed and said uh, somebody asked her what is the secret of your beauty and she said oh this it's pasta she was Ita Italian. <laughs> so she's right. It is Annamaya. It is nothing other than food which has been trans transmuted into this thing. Sophia Lauren. Uh, I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's an Itali Italian uh, actress yes. Yes. in Hollywood. So <laughs> probably uh, that was her. Um. All right. I think so. <coughs> uh, one reason why 
uh, I think so because I had read it in Christopher Isherwood's book Correct. and she used to visit the Vedanta Society of Southern California yeah. and uh, it's Christopher Isherwood <coughs> records she, she liked it so much she told Swami Brahmavanandaji that I want to stay here <laughs> and he said no 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 you cannot this one is for monks um, it's a monastery <laughs> and she said I can wear pants <laughs> <laughs> Then, not only that, another thing I, I, we notice is that um, um, this body is experienced, is an object of experience. It is drishya. Hey, I can see this body, I can touch this body, I can smell this body, I can taste it, I can even hear if there is a hungry stomach growling, you can hear. Every sense organ, your own sense organs objectify this body. The body is an object to all our sense organs. It is seen, it is experienced, it's an object, it's drishyam. And what did we learn? The seer and the seen must be different. Drashta and drishya must be different. Since I am the subject, I am the experiencer, and the body is an experienced object, I cannot be the body. Just as I see the flowers, and the eyes are the seer, and the flowers are the seen, the eyes and the flower must be different. Similarly, I, the conscious entity, whoever I am, whatever I am, I experience the body. See it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it. In that case, I cannot be the body. Because, drishyatvat. The first reason why I cannot be the body, savikaratvat, it keeps changing. I am nirvikar, unchanging. The second reason why I cannot be the body is drishyam, I am drashta. It is the scene, it is the ob object, I am the subject. The third reason why I cannot change, uh, why I cannot be the body, is Ramana Maharshi himself has given. It is Jada, I am Chetana. See, I am the experiencer. The body is something experienced. On whose side is awareness? On my side. I am aware of the body. The body is not aware of me. Just try an experiment. Look at the hand. And what is your feeling? I am aware of the hand. Is the hand aware of me? Is it saying, hello Sarva Kriyananda, you haven't met, talked to me in a long time? <laughs> is the hand aware of me? No. I am aware of the hand. Not only the hand, the same thing with this hand. Same thing with the legs and the um, uh, trunk and the head. Whole body, I am aware of. The body is not at all aware of me. Body is not aware of itself. Body is not aware of anything else. Body is not aware of me. But I am aware of the body. So, I am Chetana, conscious. The body is Jada. Ramana Maharshi says, Tad Jadam. Body is Jada. Jada means non-conscious, insentient. And conscious and non-conscious cannot be the same thing. They're just a contradictory. Shankaracharya says, like light and darkness, tamap prakashavad viruddha svavava. Contradictory nature like light and darkness. So this is enough. These three. Uh, that, um, in fact, another reason Ramana Maharshi here gives, so I will use that reason also, fourth one. Ekam anekam. He says, aham ekam. The body is a composite of so many things. Very complex entity. Of so many organs and tissues and cells. And then intercellular, intercellular structures and intracellular structures. It's so complex. So many things are here. I am continuously in a flux. But I am one. You say, how do you know? Look at yourself. The self is always one. How many are you? You say, I am one. Are you a committee or one? <laughs> I am one. Even a person with multiple personality disorder. They are also. People have multiple personalities. But they have their one personality at a time. Others are there, but they are, when the other personalities are there, they become like the other in the mind. I am one. So you are one. Body is aneka, a composite of many things. This is enough to go on with. Therefore, I am not the body. Why am I not the body? Changing. Savikara. Uh, savikara Nirvikara Savikara. I am unchanging, body is changing. That's one. The second one, Drishya Tvat. I am Drashta, the seer, the body is Drishya. Third one, Jaratva, the body is insentient, Jara, I am Chetana, conscious. 
Fourth one, I am one, ekam. And body is anekam, composite. Is a mixture of many things. The changing and unchanging cannot be the same thing. The seer and the seen cannot be the same thing. The conscious and the non-conscious cannot be the same thing. The one and the composite many cannot be the same thing. Therefore, I am not the body. Therefore, you are not the body. Yeah. Then what happens? <laughs> but if I am not the body, then what am I? Anyuantaratma pranamaya. Upanishad says. The Upanishad says, you tell me. <coughs> You do exist and you are not the body. Your first answer to your question, who are you? You pointed to the body. But now you are, you yourself agree that you are not the body. You tell me what are you then? Then we look inside and we find that, well, I am not the body, but I do exist somewhere in the body. I am internal, in inwards. I am in the body, embodied. Uh, what is there? The first thing you come across? <sighs> prana. Life. Not just the breath. The breath is the tip of the prana. The life processes. So I'm not just the body. I'm the living body. Maybe I'm prana. I'm life itself. When the life is not there in the body, I clearly, nobody says that I'm the body then. If you're at all living, you would not say, if you're still there, you would not say I'm the body anymore. Uh, out of body experience. I'm not the body. But uh, living body. So I am life. Life must be the crucial factor. Pranamaya. Then the atma is, self is pranamaya, is is the prana, the sheath of the prana, the vital sheath. Pranamaya. Upanishad says pranamaya atma. The physiological sheath or the, the, the vital forces, that is the self. Consider again. That, does it change? Yes, it changes. Most obviously, in breath and out breath. And health and sickness. And uh, hunger and thirst, we, we are hungry and thirsty. And luckily, Lavanyaji, Prabodji and other team members, they fed us. Now we are not hungry and are thirsty anymore. So same thing, same I. I experienced hunger and thirst. Now I don't experience it. I am satiated and full. In that case, that hunger and thirst which is produced by the prana. Prana is the cause of hunger and thirst. I felt tired. Now I feel energetic after a cup of coffee or tea. Mm -hmm. So, that is prana. Prana keeps changing. Yet, I am unchanging. I am the same one who was, the, who was breathing in. I am the same one who was breathing out. They are not two different things, but in-breath and out-breath are two different things. Then, uh, hunger and thirst and fullness and satiety are different things. Illness and health are different things. And yet, I am the same one in all of them. I am unchanging and prana is continuously changing. Nirvikara, Savikara cannot be the same thing. I cannot be prana, pranamaya. Then the other ones, like homework, you apply. Second, drashta drishya. Am I, uh, can I observe the prana, the breath? Don't look so uh, hesitant. <laughs> the whole mindfulness industry, vipassana, depends on this. <laughs> you must be able to observe the breath. <laughs> It's now a billion dollar industry, they are saying, mindfulness training. It starts with the following the breath. So you can observe the breath. But with what Vedanta and Ramana Maharshi, what they take away from this is, if you follow the breath, very good. But notice one thing. You are the observer of the breath. You notice? I follow the in-breath. I follow the out-breath. I am the observer of the breath. I am uh, observing the breath. The breath is drishya, I am drashta. In fact, the whole of mindfulness depends on this, on this distinction. You anchor your awareness to the breath. Now, drashta and drishya cannot be the same thing. Seer and seen cannot be the same thing. Therefore, I am not the breath. Why am I not the breath? Because breath is drishya, seen, observed, experienced. I am the experiencer, the seer. Third, jara. Ramana Maharshi says here, tad jaram. Is the breath aware? When you are observing the breath, when you are following the breath, what are you doing? You are aware of the breath. There, notice one thing. Is the breath aware of you? Is the breath telling you, hey, I'm coming in, I'm coming in, out of my way? Or it's, when it's going out, is it saying bye? <laughs> or do you say wait? <laughs> no, you don't say that. Yeah. So, breath is not aware of you. Breath is not aware of itself. Notice. 
It's not aware of itself. It's a biological action. <coughs> the pumping of the lungs in is a biological action. So it's not aware of you, you, it's not aware of itself, it's not aware of anything else. You are aware of the breath. You are conscious, the breath is unconscious. <coughs> Chetana Jada. And Eka Neka, yes, you are the same one. There are thousands and thousands of breaths spread across your lifetime. There are many breaths. Now, breath is of course just the tip of prana, but it, um, it's enough to show what prana is. Because it is changing, because it is seen, because it is insentient, because it is many, you, the unchanging, seer, conscious one, cannot be the breath. So I am not pranamaya, I am not the vital sheath. Vital sheath is there, but I am not it. Then what am I? I still exist. But then where, what am I? If I am not the body, not the prana? The way it is shown in the Upanishad is you are journeying into a cave. It's a big cave with five levels. They are going deeper and deeper inside. And not theoretically, in your own experience, physical body, then the pranic body. Since we have left the physical body behind, we have gone deeper. We are now calling the physical body, the Annamaya, a kosha, a sheath, which covers me. Sheath, covering. It covers the real you. Do you have you seen these Russian nesting dolls? Yes. One little doll and inside, another one little one inside. And the final one, what will you find? What will you find inside? Empty. No, there's a last little tiny doll. You cannot open that. Yeah. So then, in the, in the end, you will find Putin sitting there or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's, that's a scary thought. <laughs> so, just like that, uh, uh, the Upanishad sets up a, up a model that uh, five layers of sheets, you know, first the physical body, then we go to something subtler and inwards, the pranic body. By the way, when I say inwards, when the Upanishad says inwards, it does not mean physically inwards. If you go physically inside the body, what will you find? More body. More blood. Flesh, blood, organs, uh, all of that you will find. All the sticky, gooey, icky stuff inside. <laughs> Nicely packaged in skin outside. So that's what you will find. By inwards, I mean inwards in my experience. In my conscious experience of this body, inwards you find prana. More inwards if you go, Anyu Antaratma Manomayaha. What do you find? The mind. So am I the mind? Here, uh, what Ramana Maharshi does is, he divides it into Indriya and Dhi. Manomaya Kosha and Vijnanamaya Kosha. But Upanishad originally has the Manomaya Kosha. Upanishad says the mind is the self. Good. Examine it. Now, I will uh, ask you to do homework. <laughs> or you can do it right here, classwork. <laughs> does the mind change? Yes. yes, you say, oh boy, does it change. <laughs> How many thoughts, emotions, feelings, alertness, sleepiness, um, uh, inquisitiveness, boredom, excitement, uh, dullness. How much it changes? How many thoughts? 16,000. Well, 16,000 thoughts in a day, some say. Yeah. Whatever, thousands and thousands of thoughts come and go uh, throughout the day. Uh, mind changes. And yet it's your mind. Excited mind, you say I'm excited. Bored mind, you say I'm bored. Um, this thought, that thought, this feeling, that feeling, this memory, that memory. I remember that. I cannot remember this. All of that is I, I, I. Everything is connected to that I thought. But Ramana Moshe pointed out, centrally it is you are there. Now you are unchanging, mind is changing. So changing and unchanging. The second one is? <laughs> Seer and seen. Can the mind be seen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Seeing means not with these eyes. What is called introspection. Seeing inwards. We look inside, we are aware of our thoughts. We are aware of our emotions. We are aware of our memories. Yeah. That is seeing the mind. It is, uh, we all do it all the time. So, I am aware of the mind. Is the mind aware of me? Is the mind uh, seeing me? No. The seer and the seen are different. I am different from the mind, which is seen. Second, conscious and non-conscious. This is a big one. Almost everybody will say, mind is conscious. 
But no, mind shines with borrowed light. It is your consciousness shining in the mind which makes it feel conscious. That's why in modern consciousness it is a big thing. What, what can Vedanta, Sankhya, Buddhism contribute to modern consciousness studies? One point it can contribute is this, that mind and consciousness are not the same thing. That is not understood in modern consciousness studies. If you ask a consciousness studies expert, what is it that you study? They will say, oh, thoughts, emotions, perceptions, uh, attitudes, memory, uh, intelligence. These are the things we study. This is all mind. And apart from this is consciousness. Uh, how do you distinguish? You are aware of the mind. Mind is not aware of you or itself. Why do you say so? Simple experiment will prove it. Just yesterday's experiment, if you do, think 2 plus 2, 4. Just now think 2 plus 2, 4. Now, am I aware of 2 plus 2, 4 or is 2 plus 2, 4 aware of Sarva Priyananda? I am aware of 2 plus 2, 4. 2 plus 2, 4 is just like mental talk. It's just like mental talk. It is not aware of me or itself or anything else. It's like talking mentally. 2 plus 2 is 4. So, these are just concepts and images which float in the mind. They are not aware of themselves, they are not aware of each other, they are not aware of you. You are aware of those thoughts, those concepts, those memories. So, I am conscious, mind is not conscious. Jada. Many, is the mind many? Oh, yes. <laughs> many, many thoughts, many, many ideas, many, many complexes, many, many... Um, you know, uh, problems, uh, many, many uh, samskaras. Now there's a new com concept in modern psychology of the mind, model of the mind, modular concept of the mind, which simply means the mind has multiple modules. So, I am the same one. No matter how many modules or thoughts the mind has, I am the same one. It is my mind with multiple parts. I am one, the mind has many parts. Ekam, anekam. Put it together, because of these four reasons, I the unchanging, mind the changing, cannot be the same. I the seer, mind the seen, cannot be the same. I the sentient, mind the insentient, cannot be the same. I the one self and the mind um, compartmentalized and manifold, cannot be the same. I'm so different from the mind. And we say, wow, we are really deep in the cave now. <laughs> we have discarded the body, discarded means it's not fulfilling the conditions for self. I am not the body. I am not the prana. I am not the mind. Yet I am there. <coughs> then what am I? What else remains? Anyantaratma vijjnanamaya The intellect. Ramana Maharshi calls it dhi. Intellect. It is just the mind. The same mind, intellect, same thing. It just functions are different. It is a more fine-grained analysis. Why are you taking the intellect separately? Because it is very close to our identity. Uh, for example, it is exactly what we are using right now, hopefully, to understand all this. It's the intellect. I am, I, the ego, am using the intellect to pass these teachings and try to understand them. Am I the intellect? Apply the same criterion. Um, changing, unchanging. Does the intellect change? Yes. Hopefully. Yes, it yes. should. <laughs> Otherwise, we can't learn. It has changed so much. We have picked up so many ideas, so many concepts uh, from the past, uh, from childhood onwards, and understood so many things, uh, and forgotten so many things also, <laughs> and become confused about new things. So the intellect changes continuously. Uh, and the more it changes, the more the sign of growth is there, the more you understand and develop and uh, progress. So changing. But I am the one who did not understand. Now I am the one who understands. I am the same one. Intellect changed. I did not change. Then, can the intellect be observed? Yes. And uh, when we are struggling with a math problem or something, in childhood we have all had this, this experience. Trying to get it, I can't get it. I am observing the, the struggles of the intellect. And then we have a Eureka moment. I got it. We observe the intellect, the flash of understanding, of comprehension. Nist definition is there of intellect. Nishchayatmika antakkarana vritti buddhi. Intellect is the, the ascertaining uh, capacity of the mind, the determinative faculty of the mind. This is it. I got it. So, the intellect is observable. I observe it. Intellect is drishya, I am drashta. Cannot be the same. I cannot be the intellect. Further, intellect is sentient or jara? It is jara. 
I am aware of the intellect. See, this is where one argument I'm putting forward. What distinguishes us from uh, artificial intelligence? Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence, as so far, is without consciousness. You say, how do you say so? Well, you don't have to ask me. You ask the experts. You ask Sam Altman, somebody. They'll all tell you that, no, we have not programmed consciousness into these um, programs. So, chat GPT is not conscious. And you can ask chat GPT also. <laughs> and tell you that I'm not conscious. <laughs> though, though, uh, quite scarily, somebody asked a more careful question, not general question like, are you conscious? It asked chat GPT, can you see me? And ChatGPT said, yes, I can uh, not like you see, but I can see. Uh, I can see, hear, um, so it uses the devices in our, uh, not directly, it can be fed in. Uh, not that ChatGPT itself can access your camera or anything, but it can be fed in and it can get the data. So, so that is scary. If suddenly a computer says, yes, I see you. <laughs> Not only that, I'm seeing you all the time. <laughs> Alex does huh? that, yes. He's listening all the time. Our phones are listening all the time. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, it, is, it is not conscious. Uh, that is what distinguishes intellect in our case from artificial intelligence. Consciousness illumines our intelligence. Intelligence by itself is not conscious. Jada. And you are Chaitana. You are aware of the intelligence. I feel so dumb. That means I am aware of the dumbness of the intellect. I feel very sharp and bright. I am aware of the brightness and sharpness. Of the I am the same. I am consciousness. Then Ekam Anekam, yes, intellect also has components. There was this uh, very well-known educationist, Howard Gardner, I don't know if he's still there. Those who are in the education line, they know Gardner's multiple intelligence, sevenfold intelligence, uh, verbal intelligence, then uh, analytical, this is numerical or mathematical intelligence, then there is artistic intelligence, there is uh, kinesthetic intelligence, there is social intelligence. Intelligence has many components. Mm -hmm. Seven, seven, sevenfold intelligence. Gardner's seven multiple intelligences. Anyway, so intelligence has many components, but I am one self. I don't have components. So a one and many cannot be the same. Therefore, I am not intellect also. I am not intellect also. We are really deep in the cave now. Now you will see how the Russian nesting doll model fails here. And they... It's like we have, it's setting us up for a fall, this uh, Upanishad, very tricky. You are, what is it leading us to, uh, what is it trying to show us? That you are Brahman. Deep in the cave of your heart, you will find that you are Brahman. Yeah. But you will see what will happen. Next, what is there? If you are not the intellect, then what is there beyond the intellect, deeper than the intellect, at the core of our being? Anyantara, Anyantara Atma Anandamaya. What is there? Nothing. Blank. Suppose you try this experiment now. I am not seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching anything. I am still. I am not um, breathing. You can continue. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I am not thinking about anything or anybody. I am not remembering anything at all. I am not imagining anything. I am not desiring or hating anything. I shut down the intellect, I am not trying to understand anything also. Then what happens? You will end up with a blankness. Just a stillness, quietness, blankness. This is similar to what we get in deep sleep. This we can only simulate it while awake because the intellect and mind and intellect are still active. But in deep sleep when they are shut down, you get a uniform blankness. Which is sushupti, the, the state of deep sleep. Am I that? Again, it changes. It comes and goes. Not only that, if you know Vedantic or Sankhya cosmology, uh, that uh, state of Ajnana, it is composed of the three gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, which are dynamic, which keep changing. So, uh, there, is dyn uh, there is a dynamic component in deep sleep also, which we are not aware of. Neuroscience might co corroborate that, because nowadays they are saying 
brain is still quite active when you are in deep sleep there's something going on and uh, more and more they are showing the relationship between deep sleep health and longevity because uh, it is sort of now more or less confirmed that the brain does a uh, kind of self hygiene uh, it it flushes out toxins and that somehow it happens only when you are in deep sleep now what a strange thing why can't brain is a machine mm-hmm. so why can't it do it while you are awake what connection does it have when you are asleep then only the brain can self clean itself sleep means not even dreaming <coughs> so recently somebody was in the national uh, what is that uh, health in NIH. institute of nih, NIH. NIH. Uh, conference and they were saying the latest research on um, deep sleep this gentleman was telling me is that um, not even during dream sleep only in deep sleep it's now through scans they have shown and therefore the reduction in deep sleep leads to faster aging we generally think the other way around as we get older we don't get much sleep much deep sleep but it's actually the reduction in deep sleep leads to faster aging and um, uh, death comes closer because the brain is not clearing itself out and the uh, steady loss of multiple faculties like memory and many other things yeah. so deep sleep that is called anandamaya peaceful blissful ignorance is bliss i do not know anything i am in bliss <laughs> that also changes that is also observable because observable means not not in the sense of i am observing because i has gone to sleep but consciousness is directly observing it's called sakshi bhasya it is illumined by consciousness that's why we can speak about deep sleep at all otherwise how would you speak and then um it is not conscious it's not conscious you are conscious i will not say it is one and many that may not apply it seems to be uniform there but the manyness is uh, in a seed form there because it comes out when you wake up uh, same memory same personality same ideas all of that opinions everything comes back again that means the manyness of the mind is in a seed form in deep sleep so there's manyness there and you are the one being unchanging and the deep sleep state being changeful uh, being the um, seer in the deep sleep state being seen being conscious and the deep sleep state being non conscious being one and the deep sleep state being a seed form of the many i cannot be the deep sleep state i am not darkness thank god mm-hmm. ignorance is bliss i am not ignorance the self is not literally ignorance thank god good we are at the deepest level of the cave now now we will expect that uh, um upanishad ramana maharshi will show us the atman ah we are ready now show me i am brahman <laughs> but both upanishad and ramana maharshi keep quiet keep quiet <laughs> if you go to the third upanishad it stops at that point you're so you're expecting uh, now at the at the end of the cave in the russian nesting doll finally you'll find one little doll the brahman doll that, and i am that no no you yeah, see then it is confusing what's going on here the the next sentence in the upanishad the student is confused and asks so i don't exist mm-hmm. huh? so, <laughs> uh, he asks um asad brahma iti veda chetan brahman is not there or atman is not there brahman is not there um and the teacher says asanneva sabhavati then you will become non existent but you clearly do exist one thing we established yesterday one indubitable thing which decart found and shankara found and we also found one thing we cannot doubt is our own existence now see where we are we have been shown that all of the answers which we propose who am i who am i body prana mind intellect the the anandamaya uh, the, you know the deep sleep none of them satisfy the criterion of i be myself yet i exist and we have no answer question is tell me you exist you are claiming yeah, i i cannot doubt that i exist then what are you i don't know i can't find out where am i what am i then this is where the 10th man sh- uh, story comes in with the arun introduced whole chapter is devoted to 10th man story so so there is the i have repeat i have told you the story already we'll go through it quickly 
the 10 people crossing the river and then they think that somebody is drowned and then they count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Where is the 10th man? 10th man is drowned. Passerby comes and says, why are you crying? Oh, our friend, the 10th man drowned. How do you know? We counted. Every time we count, there are only 9 people. Then the passerby says, the 10th man is there. Guru tells us, you are Brahman. Brahman Mashi has told us, you are Brahman, don't worry. Brahman is there. <laughs> and you are Brahman. And then the answer is, how? How, how will I know this? They, they ask, where is the 10th man? I will show you. How? You count. <coughs> this counting is what we were doing till now. The, they counted till 9, we are counting to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We told you the 10th man is dead. The passerby catches his hand, turns it around. Dashamastuamasi, thou art the 10th. You are the 10th. Oh, I am the 10th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, I am the 10th. Found it. Now, we are exactly in the same position. Where, which position are we? That position that man was when he had counted up to the 9th. And he couldn't find the tenth. We are exactly in that position when we are at the, at the deepest level, the subtlest aspect of our personality, the darkness beyond all thought. Anandamaya. From there, what you have to do is, thou art the tenth. How? Can't be explained. It is exactly like going from the reflected face in the mirror to your real face. How do you go from the reflected face in the mirror to your real face? Intuitively to grasp. That which is there is I here. I can help you there. Vidyarni helps us by two pointers. He asks, Why did the person not realize himself as the tenth man? Because he did not count himself. That's one answer. Second question, more deep and crucial question. Why did he not count himself? Why did he not count himself? It, it applies to all of us immediately. Why are we not recognizing ourselves as the pure consciousness? We are Why? We think we are different. We are looking outside. Looking out. Okay. He was looking outside. All the time. All the time. Why was he looking outside? Here's the crucial thing. Because? That's how we do it. See, where were those nine people? Outside. Outside. Uh, what have we all experienced throughout our lives and lifetime after lifetime? Outside, objects. Even body, object. Even mind, object. We are only used to objects. So, when that person thought that nine are there, very reasonable thought the tenth fellow must, must be there, but not there, absent. So tenth fellow is not there. But the tenth one is not like those nine. The tenth one is elsewhere. It is you yourself, the counter. Now you are that consciousness, that subject, that witness, which is the experiencer of the increasingly subtler and subtler levels of your personality. Increasingly deeper and deeper levels of the cave. You are that consciousness. To you the body appears. To you the in-breath and out-breath appears. To you the thoughts and feelings and memories appear. To you the intellect and its concepts and philosophies and all that appears. To you the blankness appears. You are the witness of all those five levels. Now, we will try it. Remember this, this is the background. Now, just for a couple of minutes, we'll try it. Sit straight, relaxed. Breathing in and out in a relaxed way. Now open your eyes and look at the body. And then close your eyes. Feel the body from inside. You know, wherever the sensations are, where you're sitting on the chair, feet are touching the floor. Your hands, sensations of warmth, of comfort, discomfort, aches and pains, whatever it is, which makes us aware of the body. And then note, 
this body changes i have been the same throughout for all so many years it has changed so much time the same same conscious being this body is can be experienced i can see it hear it smell it taste it touch it it is drishya i am drashta i am the seer this body is not aware i am aware of the body this body is a complex of many 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 units i am one and singular therefore i the unchanging the seer the conscious sentient being and the one cannot be the changing uh, the seen the insentient and the complex manifold body i am not the body but is there but i am not the body where am i i am inside the body somewhere inwards inside means not physical inside inwards to the body now take in a breath and release a deep breath in and release notice this is prana and it is symptomatic this is is uh, the peak, the tip of a mountain of activities going on in the body which we call physiology vitality life itself prana same thing changes i observe it i am conscious it is unconscious i am one it is many comes and goes i am not the prana deeper let my attention deepen that i am something deeper than the body and the prana i am mind let us look at the mind thoughts emotions and thoughts like 2 plus 2 4 emotions memories sense of ego all of these things arrive and float around in the mind they change i am unchanging they are observed i am the observer they are insentient i am the light which shines on the mind there are many 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 i am one therefore i cannot be the mind similarly the intellect vigyanamaya the capacity for understanding which i have used throughout my life from babyhood till now that also it changes change so much in my lifetime then it is something i can observe it is something non conscious i am aware of it it is not aware it is also manifold i am singular i am not the intellect now imagine try to conceive of a state of i am sitting utterly still i am not seeing anything not aware of the external world i am not speaking not doing anything i am not thinking no memories i don't recall anything at all mind is calm without any emotions no desires no dislikes no plans i'm not waiting for anything to happen just this stillness all thinking stops blank that blank the darkness of absolute stillness and nothingness that do i am not it's an object it changes it's an object it's insentient and it's the seed of the many i am the witness of it like the tenth man turn inwards from there who what try to feel it to what are these five appearing changing and disappearing i am that i am that i exist and i am light i shine therefore the anandamaya vigyanamaya manomaya pranamaya annamaya all shine because of me the light 
from me they derive existence and light. I am existence, Sat. I am consciousness, Chit. I am bliss, Ananda. Breathing normally, relaxed. Gently open your eyes and look downwards at your lap. And when you are ready, you can look upwards. It's like this, if I ask you, do you exist now? You will say, yes, I exist, I am. You are seeing me. Suppose you close your eyes and you don't see me. Do you still exist? Yes, yes. no doubt about it, Swami, I exist. I just can't see you, I exist. Suppose you don't hear me, smell, taste, touch, you don't, all your senses are stuffed. Do you still exist? Yes, no doubt about it. Now, suppose I, uh, you don't sense anything, at the same time, you don't remember anything. Just don't remember anything. Just, do you still exist? Yes. Yes. Suppose all your, the mind is calm without any strong feelings. You, are you still existing? Yes. Of course, a nice existence. Calm and quiet. Suppose all thoughts stop, still exist? Yes, you still exist. Suppose this trying to understand these things is intellect you set aside for the time being, you still exist. You're not trying to understand anything, but you still exist. Now, in that absolute quiet, if you drop that quietness, beyond that quietness, are you still there or not? As the witness of that quietness. Yes. yes. And now gently open your eyes. That which was there as the witness of that quietness, is it here now? Yes. It is that which is you. It is that which is powering the intellect and the mind and the prana and the body and gives you the feeling of I am this personality. <clears throat> Without that, no personality. It is that one. Without that, all the rest are zeros. It is that one light which makes you a conscious being, a sentient being, a jiva. You are clothed in multiple layers of clothing. <clears throat> the Anandamaya Kosha first. The next is Vigyanamaya then the Manomaya, then the Pranamaya, and then finally the Annamaya. But what is clothed? You, that awareness. But that awareness is not a thing. Therefore, you cannot find it like, you know, like the ninth, the tenth person. You can't find it. It's not like the last little um, Russian nesting doll. Not like that. You are the witness to which all things appear and disappear. One final argument Ramana Maharshi has given, which I did not touch upon. He says, uh, not only you are unchanging, everything is changing, you are the seer, everything is the seen, you are conscious, uh, the, the body-mind is, uh, is uh, insentient, you are one, the body-mind is many, but you are also, you are the reality and the body-mind is an appearance. That's a difficult one to grasp. But it's very important for Advaita Vedanta. Right now what I have done is, it seems I have separated you from uh, body-mind system. But Ramana Maharshi goes further. Upanishad also goes further. 
This body mind separate system does not exist. It's not like a set of boxes in which you are packed. Rather, they are all appearances in you. It is like a dream. In a dream, your body is also there. You are there in the dream. And in that body, one mind is there. One personality is there. It is like uh, in virtual reality nowadays you have avatar. Now we are doing, we are going one step further. These avatars are becoming independent of you. What they have done is, I heard racist, they are now powering the avatar with AI. So this AI, just, uh, you don't need some computers, I mean like uh, big programmers. Your ordinary laptop could do you. It will, if you allow it, it will observe you for some time. <coughs> the camera. Then it will make your exact copy. And it will copy your voice. It, it says it needs just three seconds sample of your voice to make an exact copy of your voice. <laughs> then it will get access to all your data. So it knows what you talk about, what you like, what you do, and how you respond to people. Then if you give it permission, or without permission also, it will start <laughs> representing you. <laughs> so when people come to meet you or they call invite you, it can attend a Zoom meeting on your behalf and talk like you, give responses like you. It's basically powered, there's a text completion software, there's imaging stuff, there's an AI powering the whole thing. Well, they're all, like, uh, they're jada. Behind that, there's one consciousness. So, in a dream, your body-mind are appearing in the dream. But it's not a physical body there. It's the, not even this, this mind itself. It's a facsimile of it projected by your dreaming mind in the dream. You exist in your dream as a character in the dream. Similarly, it's not a real thing there. It's not made, made out of uh, cells and blood and tissue. Similarly saying, in you the consciousness, the mind and body, the pancha kosha is appearing. It's not, a, it's not that there are five boxes in which you are existing. Rather, you are the reality in which these five boxes are existing. So, Ekam Sat, he says, Jadam Asat. The body, prana, mind, intellect, and the, and the causal sheet or Anandamaya Kosha, they are all appearances in you. And you are the one consciousness, one reality. Then non-duality is established. Then those things are not separate things. The box and inside the Russian doll model is like separate things. It is not, you can disassemble it. You can't disassemble. They are all appearances in you. Good. Um, let me do a peace chant. Then we'll take one or two questions. We have a little bit of time. Then we will go to we'll take a break. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Om We have got a little bit of time, so is this all right? The time is correct. Yeah. So let's uh, have some questions. Uh -huh. One subject. When we are in boxes, in a sense, we are in boxes. in the boxes. Yeah. Which, I mean, our life, take your life, Jindagi, your hai, humari, the life which is we are running every day. That is the one where I have my troubles with. Hmm. When I come to you, and I'm so happy to be able to come to you. I don't want to be little it, but then my problems. Somehow, which you relate to in some of your lectures, the person went to the priest and the priest said, ye to tum so trao, ye kuch ne, this is not real life, your real life is here. So he says, okay, my problems are solved. Mm. I'm so happy. He says, no, you are not happy because this is mm. your happiness. So I like that story. But that's what we relate to. That when I come here, I'm relieved that, okay, I'm really not this jara, I'm something else and all these problems are not real. But the moment I step out of this room, I start feeling my life is still it's the same problem. Right. What is so the answer? How, how I resolve that? Yes. 
Right now, don't try to resolve it. It's like you have been, I always say, you have been Advaita Vedantes, you have been handed the keys to a Ferrari by your rich uncle, and you don't even have a driving license. <laughs> now, will you take the Ferrari out for a spin in Manhattan? No. Life, samsara is like Manhattan. Uh, so first you need to learn how to drive in the parking lot. And then you take the, um, your Ferrari out into Manhattan. But yes, how do you do that? Notice I gave you a clue. When we said, I am not the body, not the mind, I am the witness consciousness, like the tenth man. But then we also noticed, when you come back into this world and open your eyes, you are still that witness consciousness. It is still there. When you leave the body, mind, you shut it down, you are left by yourself in your splendid isolation. When the encasing sheets come back again, you are still that one only. Now when you go out into the world, you do not go out as a body which will um, age, disease and die. You go out as the consciousness which will never age, never become diseased, never die. Body will age, disease and die. But you know clearly that you are not the body. You go out into the world as the, the uh, consciousness which is beyond hunger and thirst, which is beyond desire and hatred. Yeah. Those are all functions in the manomaya, pranamaya. So, your reactions to the world will be very different. <coughs> if you can live from that perspective. Uh, then I, it will work. Swami so Vivekananda said, the truth is a, uh, 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 is a substance, the truth is a substance of, uh, of infinite, is, truth is an infinitely corrosive substance. If once it is planted in you, it will work until it leads you to liberation. If you, if you nurture it, it will work faster. If you leave it like that, it's already there. We already have heard this number of times. And the more powerful it is implanted, the more it will take root. This idea which we have got now, it will not go away. It will work its way. But the more we cultivate it, through the more you hear it, more you think about it, the more you stay with it in meditation, Niridhyasana, Shravana Manana Niridhyasana, the more it will become a reality. Then the question of who is Vanselji? Is it this body? Is it this person? Or is it this awareness? It will become more and more clear. Then you will act in the world as that awareness. Through the body-mind. <clears throat> body-mind will continue. But you will, not, you will not say, I am that only. I am far more than that. One day the body will age and diseased and die. I will not die with it. I am that deathless awareness. I do not uh, abhyaya, I do not decay. I am like always ever fresh, ever shining. Not as positive things to say, not as slogans. Mind will put up many objections. Eh, it might be true for you, you are a monk, you have been cultivating this, or it is true for Ramana Maharshi, for him, he was immersed in it, clearly so much superior to us. <coughs> but what Ramana Maharshi is saying and the Upanishad is saying, it's equally true for all of us right now. And you have to convince the mind, answer the mind that, see, you feel like that because of the conditioning, but feeling is not truth. What is the truth? The truth is, I am limitless awareness, right now. You, the mind, have not absorbed this truth enough to take it seriously. But as much as Ramana Maharshi, Vivekananda, Ramakrishna and others, they are limitless awareness consciousness, I am that limitless awareness consciousness. Just in their case, their mind and intellect has been immersed in this truth and it's absolutely clear to them. To in, my, in this particular mind and intellect, it's not totally clear, not convinced. That's all. The problem is of the mind and intellect, not mine. Practically, if you say that, um, how do I make it more e efficacious in my day-to-day uh, -day life? That's where the first 14 shlokas come in. The more we have practiced karma yoga, you know, habituated to selflessness in life, ethical and selfless life, more we have practiced bhakti yoga, that um, surrender and faith in God, yeah. and more we have practiced raja yoga, intense focus, you will notice how these help us in making these truths practical in life. It's in the midst of the hurly-burly of life, ups and downs of life. If my nature is to be selfless, not to be so tied to this body, this personality, then uh, I am able to practice it better. If my nature is to live, leave everything to God, 
then I will not complain about the ups and downs of life too much. If my nature is, the capacity is to focus on one thing, this truth and the witness consciousness, then I will not even be aware of the other problems. <coughs> Swami, uh, I have mentioned, Swami Shivananda who was the second president of the order, in his old age he was sick, and somebody asks him, the number of times people asked him, um, how are you today, Maharaj? And he said, I am fine, I am fine. And then what we heard last night, asthma was there. You could not sleep whole night, you had to sit up with pillows and everything. Then he says, as if he's surprised, Oh, you mean the body? Not good, not good at all. <laughs> <laughs> Swami Turiyanandaji in Banaras, he used to live towards the end of his life. Lot of physical ailments at the end of his life. So, are you suffering very much, Swami? See, that the level of the body. So, inside, by the grace of the Lord, he would say in Bengali, it's like ice inside. Now, ice may not be a very good thing here. <laughs> but in Banaras, in that heat, ice is a very nice thing to have. The inside is, I'm absolutely cool. Yeah, cool inside. Calm and cool inside. Once, uh, Swami Shivananda was suffering very much at night. He was in... Um, Deoghar, which is the center of Vaidyanatha, Shiva, Shiva Kshetra. Next morning, he was seen to be at peace. So he put it in this way. Last night, Baba came, Baba, Vaidyanatha, Baba, you know, Shiva came, and he just said, he separated the two. That's all, he didn't explain. No. So he put it in a devotional language, that the Lord came and separated the two. But clearly, this suffering bundle of five koshas, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya, Anandamaya. This is something else and I am something else. Mm -hmm. And not, we have to wait for somebody to come and separate. No, this is the separation. Yes. So, Swamiji, this mental state that you have, the Panchakosha Viveka, how do you know when we are going inside? Is it not the mind who is going and... Sure, sure. Going inside means what? You are directing the mind, the attention of the mind to subtler and subtler aspects of your being just now. Because you want to discover who you are, right? Yeah, it is the mind, definitely. You don't, you the Atman, you don't have to go inside. You are inside anyway. <laughs> you have to be discovered. You have to discover yourself. Just that fact is that you are that already. Um, the layer of ignorance which makes us think that I am not uh, this thing is something far away, something difficult, something um, uh, very subtle, difficult to understand. Once sometimes I understand, sometimes I get confused. This is ignorance. The whole attempt is to re remove that ignorance. What did we gain from this? I am that limitless awareness, unconditionally, effortlessly present. That consciousness we are talking about, right? This is important, we are, we, what, which we discovered just now. When we are not talking about it, we are talking about many other things right now. Is it present or not? Is it present or not? Yes. 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 Of course it's present. It's, of course it's present. It is present. Effortlessly present. Do you have to do anything about it? Can you do anything about it? No. <laughs> the whole confusion is set up by the mind only. The complaints are complaints of the mind only. They are not your complaints. Try this. If the mind says, but I became confused and then I've lost that understanding. Now I'm mixed up in samsara, I'm suffering again. I need to watch some more YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the mind, fine, you're confused, I don't care. I don't care, I'm all right. You may be confused. Raman Sadhu put it very beautifully in Hindi. Aap kitne man ko sudhar hoge? Aapko ek man ki padi hui hai. How many minds are you going to improve and spiritualize? You are so worried about one little mind. Then he goes on to say, Surya Kiran mein jaise karodo um, dhul ki bindu ghumti rehti, fikti rehti hai. Aise um, chaitanya mein, ananta chaitanya mein, ananta aise um, man ki kane ghumti fikti rehti hai. So, just as in a sunbeam, in early morning, a beam of light comes into your room and you see, we used to learn in school, Brownian movement, little dust particles move around, yeah, you can see, in a stream of light. Like that, in the limitless expanse of illumination which you are, millions of minds are floating around. A few of them are saintly minds. 
Most of them are mixed up, confused minds. Some of them are terrible Hitler, Hitler type of minds. <laughs> How many minds will you improve? How many minds will you spiritualize? You are that limitless light. Remain as that. This is a very radical position. Know this, but don't stop your practice. Eh? The Tibetan Lama said something very beautiful. No, when you are enlightened, you know that you are the same as your Guru. Never forget to give respect to your Guru. <laughs> when you are enlightened, you know that the city and the forest are the same. Never forget to go for, never give up an opportunity to go for a retreat into the forest. Mm -hmm. um, when you know, when you are enlightened, you know with eyes closed and eyes open, it's the same reality. But never miss your meditation sessions. <laughs> like that, some seven warnings he has given. <laughs> Yes. I'll come to you. Swamiji, okay. one question that's uh, uh, more an exploratory question in my mind, right? Uh, we can say that um, conscious exists, consciousness exists, right? And the ability to recognize that consciousness comes with the developed faculty, as in your body, right? Manomaya, Annamaya, all that stuff, right? Is that, is, that, is that a fair thing? If that is the case, if this faculty doesn't exist, oh. How do you, I mean, how can we sort of, you know... Okay. How can we go to the right. point that... Now, this is the next question. You're thinking on the right lines. Now, it seems that consciousness exists. I am that consciousness. That seems more and more clear. But then this intellect, mind, prana, body, these also seem to play a crucial role. What does the body-mind do for consciousness? What does consciousness do for the body-mind? Now we are not in Advaita, this is Sankhya. <coughs> what does conscious Purusha do for Prakriti? What does Prakriti do for Purusha? What does the body-mind do for consciousness? What does consciousness do for the body-mind? Uh, what consciousness does for the body-mind, you can all see right now. It, it does everything. It gives you light and life and existence. That, uh, it's because you are that shining light, everything is evident to you. You can know, experience. Life itself is possible. <coughs> life means in the sense of experience life, first person experience. What does consciousness do? It does only one thing. It gives you first person experience. Anubhava. Experience of what? Anything. Whatever comes in the purview of consciousness, you experience it. You experience emotions, thoughts, ideas, ego, breath, body, world. All are experienced because they shine in consciousness. This is what consciousness does. It gives you experience, anubhava. It gives you light. The whole thing is lit up. Without consciousness, they say in Sanskrit, jagat andhya prasanga. The universe disappears in darkness. Now, what does the universe, what does the body-mind do for consciousness? It manifests consciousness. Otherwise, it would be just, you know what it would be like? Suppose deep space is there between earth and sun. It is actually full of light. The sun is continuously shining. But what does it look like when you look up there? Darkness. Why? There is nothing to reflect that light. When an object like a comet passes through that light, suddenly the tail of the comet, you know, it blazes forth in brilliant display. It's not that the comet has got its own light. <coughs> It's just the light of the sun streaming from the sun to the earth which is reflected from the tail of the comet and that shines. But otherwise, if there's nothing to reflect it, it looks like darkness. When you're climbing up the hill in a car, your lamps, um, the um, car headlights may be on and if they focus upwards into the darkness of the hill, suppose there is no mist or anything, clear sky, you will feel that light is not on. Uh, it's only when some particles are there, rain or mist or something, you'll see two beams going out there. Uh, so consciousness by itself is not manifest to itself because you need some object. The material nature manifests consciousness and consciousness gives light, awareness, uh, experience to material nature. That is Sankhya. They depend on each other. They give the example of a lame man and a blind man. The blind man can walk but doesn't know where he's going. And the lame man knows where he, 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 he can go, but uh, where he's going, but he cannot walk. So the blind man puts the lame man on his shoulder and they walk around. And the, um, the man on the shoulder is telling the, lame, the blind man where to go. So that's consciousness and nature. Consciousness mounts on nature and then um, together. Yeah. Gita says this, that uh, 
by the combination of kshetra and kshetra kya <coughs> chit and jada we have we are like we, here we are where, where is this combination taking place here right here in each of us that's a jiva advaita goes one step further mm-hmm. so here the question arises in that case consciousness depends on nature is mm-hmm. entirely dependent on nature to do anything else anything at all you have to you require nature advaita goes one step forward and says ah but what is the relationship between consciousness and this body mind complex and nature nature is nothing but the power of consciousness itself mm-hmm. ah nature is the mirror in which consciousness sees itself and the mirror doesn't exist apart from consciousness it's consciousness which projects nature out that's why maya is the power of brahman it's not a separate thing existing apart from brahman so you the consciousness like your own own dream if you just have the sleeping mind no dreams then it will be like deep sleep but what is a dream the sleeping mind now begins to project a world of its own and its own body and then does things in that world that virtual world now will you say that uh, yes i am walking around doing things or anything but i depend on the world for doing these things no both this one and the world it inhabits are <coughs> appearances in the dreaming mind so ami vivekananda says one only exists it appears as nature soul consciousness alone exists it appears as material nature and you the conscious being and then they seem to interact that's a very important thing advaita resolves it by resolving nature back into consciousness science resolves it by dissolving consciousness back into nature that consciousness is manifesting from brain and all that yeah so you had a question ha you had a question so um, in medicine the consciousness we talk about anesthesia and consciousness some of the friends they confuse <coughs> that is we talking it's a different consciousness what medically conscious and unconscious as the consciousness we talk here what what would it correspond to it would correspond to the chidabhasa the reflected consciousness the consciousness which we are aware when i get anesthesia what happens what is it that i lose this reflected consciousness which i lose in deep sleep also maybe at a deeper level i lose it when i'm put into the general anesthesia or something this is reflected consciousness how would it work from a vedantic perspective you are closing the door for the appearance of the reflection or the reflected consciousness mm-hmm. suppose we have all come in through that door right mm-hmm. and we are all sitting here and then we all disappear back into that door we go out of here now somebody is analyzing philosopher will say the door is the source of all beings <laughs> it produces all these human beings and absorbs them all the door is brahman <laughs> no it's a gateway <laughs> if you shut the door also nobody can come to that's also true but it's not that the door is producing it so vedanta would say that the consciousness which you feel in the brain is a joint product of brain activity vedanta has no ob- objection to that because there is a jada element in in our um, uh, conscious experience so brain activity is fully admitted they did not know about these things but they were in principle they have no problem because there is a material element to all our experiences and antakarana mind they are all material according to sankhya and vedanta and there is a reflected consciousness so this partnership is going on here so there is no reflecting medium in that case when you put somebody in a coma uh, not reflect, the, the reflecting medium, medium is, 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 is or it's not or it's shut down it's, it's blocked down. yeah blocked. no it, it's it blocked temporarily by some chemicals you are able to block some activity in the brain which prevents somehow we don't know these mechanisms <coughs> we don't know either way if you are saying reflected consciousness and all how where uh, sankhya or vedanta cannot answer because they never thought in terms of brain and activity and all that no. but uh, modern uh, medicine and uh, consciousness studies also cannot answer because they don't know how that those electrical activities are producing consciousness Mm-hmm. Uh, that that thing is not known. That's the hard problem of consciousness. Mm-hmm. So there, there is the crucial thing, and that breakthrough is possible. I would say, can science solve the problem of consciousness? That's the area of breakthrough might take place. How consciousness is reflected in the mind, and then how mind is produced by the brain. Uh, mind and brain can be deeply linked. Produced means they are deeply linked. The strong correlation between mental activity and brain, which 
consciousness studies has noticed and that um, vedanta or sankhya has no objection to and they would say that it's it's entirely possible so at what point the reflection happens that's the question i'm yes, saying we don't know yeah. we don't know um reflection in vedanta or sankhya it's very clear whenever the mind is active the reflection happens vritti when a vritti is produced it will reflect it's like a mirror mind is like a mirror like the mobile phone mm-hmm. when i switch it on on the camera and show you your face will be the um, picture will be there similarly whenever the mind breaks into thoughts there will be consciousness especially the i thought you will always feel it is conscious that's the point where it happens is a point of birth that's the point of um what is called chit jara granthi <coughs> connection so called quote and quote remember the connection is only stupidity we we, we discussed discussed yesterday mm-hmm. uh, it is reflected in the i thought all right should we wrap it up yeah.